In this video, we'll be discussing the introduction to electricity and why you even have this class. Um, most of us know that the benefits of electricity are fast. Without it, we wouldn't have lights, wouldn't have a camera, wouldn't have any of the electrical tools that we use in this industry that make our life so much easier to deal with. But the impact that they have on the human body is something that's almost never discussed. And in cosmetology and especially skincare, it's vital that you understand the things that could go wrong, probably won't, but once again, they could go wrong. And the issues that we're gonna discuss here is your electrical health hazards. Um, it's important that you understand if you have a shock, if you burn somebody, what is the proper first aid? How do I take care of it? So in the long run, there's no issue involved. The two main hazards that you'll be discussing in your group discussions will probably be the shock and the burn. Everybody has had a local shock. And that's where you plug something in to the and the sparks come out and you go, woo, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, that's why there's rubber insulation on the cords so that you don't get hurt, hurt. Then there's the general shock, which is almost never gonna happen in our industry. We're not electricians. You're not working with a lot of electrical, electrical energy. Uh, we're only working with appliances. I don't think anybody's ever really gotten hurt with their toaster, you know, or their microwave or things like that because we're used to using them. Nobody's, I don't think, yeah, let me not say that, that's not true. You have heard of a blow dryer falling into the bathtub and electrocuting whoever was in it. Okay, so the general shock is not necessarily not gonna happen, it's just highly unlikely, but if it does, what is your proper first aid? How do you how do you get that blow dryer out of the bathtub, out of the water? Well, you certainly don't reach in to pick it up. That's for sure. You're obviously, maybe not so obviously, going to disconnect it, pull the plug. Stop the flow of electricity if you can. Now, most houses and, and businesses are, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? the circuit breaker, your safety device. Okay, and I think almost all of us have had the dishwasher going and maybe the um, a vacuum cleaner. And then maybe somebody else in the house decided to use another appliance that was on that same circuit and all of a sudden, you don't have any more electricity. So I think we've all done that and that's a safety device. That's, you know, a circuit breaker shutting down because of the heat involved with the electrical current flowing and it's a safety device so that you can't really get those shocks and it's in place and we need to know them. The burns, however, are very common. Okay, getting a thermal burn with a curling iron, a flat iron and estheticians with your skin scrubber, this is an electrical current and it's used to remove stuff and out of your skin. Okay, it's the galvanic current, and if you hold it in one place, you can burn the skin. You have to keep it moving. The skin has to be damp. So when we discuss the appliances and tools that hairdressers and estheticians use, we'll be talking about the electrical health hazards that go with each individual item, not in a general basic class like we're doing right now. When you do or are around someone who um, has a heart issue that's electrical, because remember your body runs, well, you don't remember because we haven't had the class yet. I'm going to explain to you how the heart and the central nervous system use electricity and why electricity can harm you, but also how electricity can save your life. So in the old curriculum, they had the AED machine listed specifically in the estheticians. As I revisited the curriculum, as I'm getting ready to make sure that you have everything presented to you that you're supposed to get, I noticed they deleted the AED machine, but that doesn't mean you don't need to know about it anymore because this is the machine that they now have on campuses, high schools, 
because football players, those young teenage guys, were having heart attacks on the football field and dying. And the AED machine placement in the gyms and wherever you're around somebody who may have an issue, having an AED machine can save someone's life. There may be some of you who are raising your parents or your grandparents. And um, sometimes those hearts don't want to function correctly. And so the AED machine is an automatic external defibrillator. And uh, it's something that anybody can use, very simple. They just installed one in the um, foyer of the building for cosmetology, the business building on campus. It's been there about a year now. And it's brand new to us. But they're realizing that that implement could save someone's life. And then you're going like, I don't know anything about it. What am I going to do? Well, the automatic defibrillator is more of a machine that's going to give you information on the heart. So you put the electrodes, you know, on the client or the, the uh, victim and you turn the machine on and the machine gives you, you know, that heartbeat thingy that you get on an EKG, although they don't print it out, but the machine registers the electricity that's running through the heart. And if everything's okay, it just says no problem. But if there's something wrong, it'll say, do 911, push the button, which delivers that electrical shock to the body, stops the heart at that moment, giving the heart a chance to get back into sinus rhythm because it's fibrillating. And when we, once again, when we're talking about the heart, I'll explain that a little bit more so that you have a better understanding of why you need it. But this tool could actually save someone's life. An example could be you're in the salon and you're client has brought their aging mother in and she's sitting in the reception area waiting for daughter to have her service and your receptionist noticed that she's kind of slumped over a bit and not feeling well and so she asks are you okay and she goes oh I feel a little nauseous okay well when we discuss the heart and and heart attacks you're going to find that nausea is the number one sign of a heart attack in a woman we don't necessarily get the pain down the left arm, pain in the neck, although some of us are a pain in the neck. That doesn't qualify. But the pain up your neck, is those are traditional. But for women and a lot of people, it's nausea. She goes, well, maybe I ate something at lunch that didn't sit well with me. And you say to her, you know, let me, let me attach the AED machine and let's see. It'll tell me if it's your heart or if it's nausea. So if it comes back nausea, the machine is just going to say everything's okay. There's no problem. But if it's a heart issue, they're going to say call 911. Okay, this person is in distress. And then they also may tell you to push the button. Okay, when you push the button, that's going to deliver that electric shock like you've seen the paramedics do. They put the things together, they put the machine down on your chest, they administer that electrical shock, and it gives the heart a chance to restart itself. In our industry, there's really not much of a chance of you needing one, but it's a really good tool to have around if you're um, in a situation where you have older people around you a lot. Now, if I kill the woman, no, not that you're going to, let's just say that I did this. I rendered first aid and she died anyway. Can the family sue me? Am I liable? Well, in the United States, we come under the Good Samaritan law and you are not liable for rendering first aid. In uh, European countries, they call it the duty to rescue. Okay, if you see someone in distress, you have the duty to try to help as much as you can. Okay, and without putting yourself at risk. So you need to remember that when you're working with electricity, you don't touch somebody who's in that general shock mode. You turn off the supply of electricity before you ever touch anybody because the body is a conductor of electricity and you'll be electrocuted too. So that's not gonna help anybody. So be sure as you're going through your homework and you're looking and answering your questions that you read the material that's in your module one so that you can answer the questions that you need to answer.